Hey guys, Harv here with a video for the demo users. In our last Moonlander tutorial, I claimed that it was compatible for the demo. It actually isn't, so I'm going to make a ship now that is compatible with the demo. We have our command module and our parachute with a decoupler and then a fuel tank. Now this is where it gets different because we have our vectoring liquid engine. Turns out that the orbital engine that we usually use, this little one, isn't actually in the demo. I evidently forgot just how restrictive the demo is. Man, nostalgia. Um, we are going to build this in the modern day VAB in order to reduce the amount of lag I get. Because that lag, man, that lag, it's absolutely terrible. Putting our impromptu landing legs, we need to have decouplers, fuel tanks, and obviously fuel lines on the side. And to actually land on, we're going to use three SAS modules. <gasps> three SAS modules? That's what I always complain about in the test pilot videos. Well, the thing is, we're not using them for the extra force that we may or may not get from them. We're using them to land on, as I've already said. So if we do get any force from them, then we're going to have a very stable ship, certainly. Anyway, we have a decoupler. This is our landing and return stage. Decoupler, we have our tricoupler to put three fuel tanks underneath them with, put the symmetry up to three. Two stacks of three and our vectoring engines. This is exactly the same stage that we used in our current version 0.17 Moonlander which may or may not be updated shortly to remove the entirety of the bottom stage. Hmm, not giving away any hints, but that may be a coming up video. So we have that stage and then we have some more decouplers, this time with three stacks of our great fuel tanks. These fuel tanks must have so much more capacity in the demo because this stage lasts for ages and we're using the standard liquid engine. So we're going to copy that by holding ALT, clicking and dragging out to the side, and we can tie it together with some struts, similar to how we did on that last stage up here. Tie it together with some struts, and then we can grab this, and we're trying to want to get it level, so we just want to put it just underneath the decoupler, just like this. should be able to get it pretty level. It doesn't really need to be that level, because the engines are pretty strong to stand on in the demo but uh, it needs to be level enough. Here we go, putting some struts here to stop the waggling, or the wobbling. <laughs> and we can put some struts down here as well to similarly stop the wobbling down on the subdeck. So we have this, and we're going to use those good old dustbin Jebediah boosters because we don't have any other boosters in the demo. Probably don't need them, but we should do them for nostalgia's sake anyway. And there we go, that is almost the entire ship. We just want to put some yet more struts on the side here, going from up here to up here. That wasn't straight, up there to up there. And similarly, we can put it from here to up there. Very good, very good. And that is the ship. Quite squat, isn't it? It seems, I don't know, for some reason it seems like quite short. Anyway, let us sort out the staging, because it's very important that we get this right. We want to put all of our bottom boosters in one stage, so we have the boosters and the lifting engines all here. Then we can lift those decouplers for the boosters and put it above this stage, so that when that runs out, we can detach them. Followed by the vertical decouplers to detach the entire stage from the next transfer stage, we then initiate the vectoring engines, and we don't want to decouple these landing feet, that would be counterintuitive. Instead we make a new stage, we can put the decoupler, the vertical decoupler that separates the landing from the transfer stage in there, and then all we have to do is take this stage and move it up above the vectoring engine. So that we initiate the engine, and then we decouple the landing feet as and when we want to. And other than that, there is nothing else to change. We can call this Demo Moonlander. Oh, or we could call it Lazander. <laughs> demo Moonlander, there we go. So, I wonder what this looks like in the demo. Well, it probably looks a little bit like this, to be honest. Ah, yes, us veterans prepare for the nostalgia wave, because here we are in the demo. 
in the demo. I can't believe people still put up with playing this <laughs> when the full version is infinitely better, but it is nice just to go back to it every so often. So we just dropped our boosters. Something to something I just noticed then actually. Those decouplers are a lot stronger. <laughs> they can blast those heavy boosters away. Actually well no, those are light boosters, so maybe because they are so late light, maybe that's why they flew so far. But they did go far anyway. So for those of you who are watching this and have no idea how to get to the moon, I should probably go through the basics. You want to go straight up until you hit 200 meters per second or you are around 10,000 meters up. In this rocket's case, that's about the same time. So when you hit that, you want to be curving over maybe a quarter of the way to horizontal, something like that. And as you build up speed and altitude, you want to curve over more and more. This is going eastward towards 90 degrees because that's the way the Kerbin rotates, making it easier. It's also the way that the moon goes round Kerbin, uh, which helps somewhat in some cases if you miss or things like that. Anyway, speed keeps climbing, keeps climbing. Eventually you'll swap over to an orbital speedometer. And if you're past a thousand meters per second on that, you really kind of want to be horizontal. Look how much fuel the ship has got. In any regular ship, we would not still be burning our lifting engines, and in fact, we did actually just run out. So we can detach and then initiate the next vectoring engines. We're going to get into an orbit about 100 kilometers, 100 kilometers above the surface. That's a, that's a decent kind of standard orbit. I would prefer it if we could get away with 150, but I don't know if we can, because as you can just see there, you can only time warp at 10 times speed if you're under 150, which sucks. It takes so long, so we swapped out to 4 times speed now in the video editing, and we now just go into cinematic mode for epicosity, and we are warping around at only 10 times speed, but it's times by 4, so 40 times speed at the moment. That's still less than what we can do on Kerbin in version 0.17. So it's definite that they made a good decision implementing higher warp speeds for us, certainly. So we see that octagonal sunrise. <laughs> the octagonal sun. I never never questioned that for some reason, never did. And uh, look at this demo landscape. It looks, the textures look very different to what we have now. And also the way it sabazzes and just renders occasionally, but yeah. So still in full time speed, the moon has risen, and that is our visual cue. We were in a 100km orbit, and we wait for the moon to rise over the horizon, and then we burn prograde at 90 degrees horizontally, and we increase our trajectory so that we achieve a higher altitude on the opposite side of Kerbin to what we're currently on, which happens to take us directly into a collision with the moon. We don't really want a collision with the moon. First of all, if you didn't have a collision, then you're going to be in a trajectory similar to this anyway. And second of all, it's better to get into an orbit just to be safe. You have more control. So we raise it to a 50 kilometer periapse, and then we burn retrograde, which is in this case at 90 degrees, and we slow ourselves down by doing that and get into a 50 kilometer orbit. Except now we are going to land on the light side of the moon. So we detach to that, and we now have our lander returning back to two times speed. We have three fuel tanks we're using currently, which are our landing legs, and other than that, we don't have much else. Three fuel tanks, and we have those SAS modules to land, to use as our feet. They have an impact tolerance of nine or something, so they're not actually particularly strong, which means we should land quite carefully. And to land carefully, we're going to burn now. We've just passed the 500 meters per second, so we want to reduce our speed. God, that's an impressive sight, isn't it? Look at that massive plasma tail. <laughs> plasma tail. I think that's the correct word. If it isn't, it should be, because it's epic. So we can decrease our speed to around 200 meters per second, something like that. Basically just a controlled descent is what we want. Really, we're just falling and we're trying haphazardly to slow ourselves down, but uh, if we get up to, say, 285 meters per second or whatever, do we just want to keep our uh, our speed low? And you can see we're coming in pretty fast. It's pretty good we have this strong engine. Although we don't really have much choice for landing engines in the demo. And we're slowing ourselves down. 20 meters per second. 10, 9, 8. And what's that creepy music? Creepy music. That's not in the game. I've added this. Because, basically, are we going to land safely? 
Are we not? Are we going to find out? No, we're not. Because, no, 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 I want you to go away and do this for yourself right now to find out how to do it. If you don't know how to return from the moon, then all you need to do is just watch one of my other videos, for which there are annotations on the screen right now. So, if you liked the video, please do like the video. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.